Thank you. Um, so, hi, I'm Scott Moser. Um, I am employed by Cisco Systems. They paid my way here, so I'm happy, and I get to work on lots of neat things with them. Um, we work, my team is working on something called Project Machine. On GitHub, you can look at that. It's got a lot of the things that we're trying to do internally and integrate it together um, in an open source project that we'd like other people to participate in ultimately, but we'll see. Um, I guess if, if you have questions during this, feel free to stop me and ask. I'm fine to be interrupted. Um, just a little intro. So the goal is to talk about kernel command line and then how you, how you deal with that and system D and secure or measured boot. Um, yeah, and then, and then system D stub and kind of what it can do and then stubby, which is the, 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 shim, the stub loader that we're using and then questions, so. Um, so why, why does the kernel have a command line? Why do you care? Um, basically, it's, it's, a, it's a program, like, right? The program you write takes command line args, the kernel takes command line args. We, it's, from that perspective, it just makes obvious sense. Um, and then flexibility, the uh, in RAMFS and UKI are huge, right? I mean, if you're gonna boot with a different command line and have to re regenerate your UKI, that would be insane, right? You'd be shipping around 130 megabytes of stuff in order to differ by a byte or two. Um, over time, because of, the com because of the kernel command line's flexibility and the need to be able to do that, bootloaders, pixie boot, different things like that make it really easy to edit. Um, so, and people are accustomed to editing it, right? Um, so what does it do? What does the kernel command line do? It does all sorts of stuff, like a lot of stuff. I say it's one part system configuration, like console equal or, you know, this system's parameters. One part workaround, maybe you've got some, you know, blacklist this module or do different things. Um, one part uh, debug for, for people to get in, right? Or potentially a rootkit there. And, uh, and then, and it's used by both kernel and user space. So not just the kernel but user space consumes that in a lot of ways. Um, inside the kernel, it's, it's widely used. There's like 900 parameters, over 900 in kernel parameters.txt. Um, the kernel parameters that go into the kernel proper have no namespace at all, and it's reasonable. It's, it's, it's command line interface you're talking to the kernel. The module parameters are then namespaced with mod name dash var name, so that's good, right? You can kind of look at, look at the parameter and know what it's going to be used for. Um, and then the kernel supports actually key value pair with quoted spa with quotes around it, which is, I, I was kind of surprised that it did. Um, but, so that could be useful. And generally, the, the kernel's handling of, in, of command line is pretty consistent. And over time, there's been improvements. Um, I don't know, I'd say, I don't know what kernel went in, but recently they, they supported a dash dash or s start ignoring anything after the dash dash as kernel arguments, like the kernel won't, will stop parsing when it sees a dash dash, just kind of like user space programs often do. Um, and then recently, very recently, they started flagging unknown kernel command line parameters. So when the kernel saw one on there before the dash dash, it'll warn you. So like it's getting better in handling of things, right? Um, more user friendly, more able to see errors and stuff. Um, so for user space consumers, there's like a lot of consumers, right? There's no way e even to understand how many consumers there are because anybody who thought it'd be a good idea to open up proc command line and read it can do that, right? Their, their little shell script can just cat proc command line, look for some parameter on there, do whatever they want. There's no namespace on it. You have really no idea what's going on. Um, you have no idea what command line parameters are going to have effect. Um, just a list there, yeah, systemd, cloud init, and NITRAMFS, every, every one that I've, I mean, they all take parameters and installers and then just really a lot of other things. Um, yeah, so it's kind of, user space is less well under, you know, constrained than the kernel, just because it could come from anywhere. Um, so 
That results in what people have called uh, the kitchen sink. You know, the kernel command line is like this entry point to your your boot, right? And everything can be in it. And you really have no idea what's going on. It, it's, it, I'm probably being overly dramatic, but you you don't know what's gonna what's gonna happen with a given com a command line. You don't know who's gonna parse it or what what's gonna happen. Um, there's no central dock. It's not consistent, and you have lots of different implementations. Um, and then it's confusing. Sometimes, like the the root equal or IP equal. Sometimes the kernel's gonna handle that. Sometimes the init ramfs is gonna handle it. You you don't really. It's hard to know. Um, then. Even inside, if you look, this is from, I think, kernel, kernel doc somewhere, that quote there. Um, the kernel parses up to the dash dash. If it doesn't recognize a parameter and doesn't contain a dot, the parameter gets passed to init. Parameters with an equal go into init's environment. Um, and others are passed as command line arguments. So you can, so dash dash foo equal bar is not the same as foo equal bar dash dash. That makes sense. But what was really surprising to me is that if you, a dash dash, let's see, foo equal bar dash dash will actually change in its environment. So that means I could pass either systemd proc command line variable to systemd, which is kind of recursive because it will read that as if you gave it proc command, as if it read it from proc command line. Or you can change its path or you can ld preload. You know, you can do all sorts of things there. It's, it's very powerful but very, very hacky. Um, so if you, if you've been following along here in the TPM and measured boot things, if you, unless you weren't present for all of the previous talks, you, you kind of might see where this is going. For, for measured boot, you basically can't give arbitrary access to the kernel command line, right? Um, that's not going to go well. Um, it, it's a major attack vector and there are just lots of things that might get you into trouble. I didn't mean to make that black. Um, so the last week there was a CVE or a, a blog post there about um, mash enter to bypass uh, full disk encryption, right? And that wasn't a kernel command line attack, but it gives you an idea on the amount of stuff that is happening in the init ramfs and the, the amount of attack surface you have on that init ramfs, right? Um, so it, we, you want to turn it, you want to turn down that, that as much as you can. Um, I think probably at this point, after a day and a half, everybody's got a decent idea of what an EFI stub is uh, in a UKI. Um, and so I, I don't need to spend too much time there, I think. Um, you, you can build in a full command line if you want. You know, you can build into a full command line into your into your stub if you want, and that's very nice and secure, but it's really, really rigid, even for like our use and my team is, is an appliance, but then some systems need one parameter on the command line and some need another, and it's just really rigid, and then in the event that you have to sign each of those different kernel parameters uh, or command lines, you then have to have a signing material each time you have to do so. Um, so, SD stub. If you're if you're here, you're you're looking at system at uh, stub and UK UA, UEFI loading. You probably have some familiarity with this. Again, like if you were unless you were just not here earlier. Um, it's got it's pretty good. It's got good utilities, um, good tools there. Um, it's got uh, UKFI makes it really easy to build it. Um, there is very active development, like really active development, um, and so following, keep, keeping up is is non-trivial. Um, and then there's there's loads of functionality there. I mean, there's been multiple talks here. You could definitely do a, a full talks on just SD boot by itself. There is really good doc. It, it's really good. Um, I mean, if you're in the position where you can fly to Germany and have Luca or, or Leonard talk to you, then that's great. But if you can't come here, then the, the documentation is a good second, second thing, you know. Um, 
So how does that, how does SD stub work? There's companion, fi companion files alongside the kernel in the like kernel name .efi.d directory, um, and based on their name, they're loaded as add-ons. Um, and then each of the add-ons has a, in it a a section for command line, sbat, and you name. The the command line is obvious. It's a command command line parameter that the that SD boot will load, look at the command line parameter, and basically then append to the um, to the command line. The sbat is what is from is inherited or reused from SD um, from shim, um, and it is a way that you can uh, let's see revoke access to existing kernel or existing things. So if, in the ever in the need in the situation that you're ever in that you have to revoke a signed kernel command line addition, that, that's the way that that would happen. Um, and then uname, so if there's a uname section and it matches, or if there's a uname section, SD shim will only use that, that parameter with a kernel that also says it's that same version. Um, I think that's a huge addition, um, is one, one of the things I argue for on the pull request because then you just, you limit your attack surface to oh, that was a bad kernel parameter to, oh, that was a bad kernel parameter on a kernel that I signed like six months ago or, you know. So that I think is very useful. And then the order of command line parameters is supplied by the user effectively. Whoever controls the ESP, like if you could, if you had access to that or you build up that ESP file system, the order of command line parameters is just in alpha sorted order, which however they are in those file names, then they get appended to the kernel parameter, kernel command line. So you don't really have a lot of support on, well, I guess you, you can, you can support them. You can, you can control the order that they're passed, but you can't control the order in which they're, the, in which they're merged with the command line, that, with the existing command line, if that makes sense. Um, so stubby stubby is 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 our is something we did we forked off sd dash boot i don't know it was several years ago sd stub several years ago we we forked and then made some changes because we have an internal appliance that basically we weren't going to be able to let bin bash appear on the the command line right um so we did some work before the signed EFI modules were available to do this. Um, and the, the approach we took was to do a, a simple allowed list. Um, and it just does token by token matching. We don't, I don't support quotes or spaces. You can't do key equal quote space value pair. It's just simple space based tokenized. Um, it supports exact matches like console equal X or also uh, begins with by like uh, prefix matching, so console equal kind of star es essentially. Um, and right now we're not measuring the kernel command line into anything. Um, we probably should, but in my head it was, it was not obvious whether or not, if you passed the whitelist, whether or not you should measure those arguments into the the PCR, you should measure those because you kind of explicitly said that they didn't matter. So then if you don't measure them in, then you have a more stable PCR value when you're, that you could compare against, right? Versus if every command line parameter changed, thank you. If every command line parameter changed the, the PCR value, then you couldn't write policies, then, every, then you wouldn't be able to access things based on the policy. Um, some examples, like if you had the token there, verbose or quiet, directly in in the section, then those are direct matches. And then the anchored, effectively anchored to the beginning, key equal or anchored to the beginning, just anything that matches that will work. It works so that makes it that works really well with things that are namespaced. Like if your user space application only, is only going to read parameters that start with, you know my app dot something, it's easy to say, well, you can pass anything on the command line that takes my app dot because I know my app dot is not going to give you, I know my app is not going to do arbitrary things and bad things, 
right, that would compromise my system. Um, so the way it works is you have, a, you have this built-in, you can build in your command line, you build in a command line, param, a command line into the stub. You use this stubby rtcli1 string, which just means I'm going to replace any command line parameters that are passed on the pr uh, any command line parameters that are passed outside of the stub are going to go into there. So, um, yeah, it's really it's really ugly. I don't like the the capital letters. I want to make it I want to make it obvious to anybody that was using it that you know hey and also that they wouldn't accidentally put that string in there, right? But then also just it was clear that this is what's going to happen. So the, just some examples there. The, um, if, you, if you have a built-in parameter, a built-in command line up to that dash dash, and then the user were to try to put rd init equal slash bin slash sh, that would give you, that would use, in, that tells the kernel, hey, instead of invoking slash init in the init ramfs, sl invoke slash bin slash sh, but because it's after the dash dash there, then it's actually protected. The kernel's not going to read, the kernel's not going to pay attention to that. It'll actually end up going as a parameter to init, which wouldn't be great, but um, is better than just a root prompt. Um, yeah, and so there's, there's other examples there. And if you've got a built-in that doesn't contain that string, then then, and you pass parameters, then you, you don't get booted. Um, and then if you're running in secure boot mode, it'll go ahead and load, the, if you're running in secure boot mode and you pass parameters on the command line that are not good, then it's going to, it's going to refuse to boot. Um, in insecure mode, if you're not in secure boot mode, then it will go ahead and load them but warn you and tell you, hey, that wasn't, that wasn't good. Um, just a comparison here, kind of to look at ST stub and stubby. Um, you have individual signed kernel command, uh, kernel parameters in the one versus a, a white list and a loud list in in stubby. Um, a bunch of external EFI files versus you've built the thing in to the UKI when you built the UKI. Um, the the parameters in ST stub are appended in you know in user supplied or in file system supplied order and in stubby the parameters are substituted substituted and user provided order within the original command line um, for sc stub if you need to add a new command line parameter like y you know you had somebody in the field or you just realized that, yeah we really need to enable debug messages or early print k or something you can go ahead and and add that later on sign it ship it and it's a i don't know what i'm guessing small number of k executable that that does what you need it to do versus in stubby if you want to ever change that you're basically going to have to ship another kernel another uki which is so it's large um sd stub so each time you need to sign a uh, kernel parameter you're going to need access to key signing material that's that makes sense um and I get, I mean, it's not, you obviously had to build these things, and so you had, you had access to key signing material, but, um, so I don't think it's really necessarily any different, but, and then Stubby, you're just, you're just signing it all into one, into one go at that point. Um, going forward, there's some bugs in Stubby that need to work with. I, we, we recently had somebody try to do some ARCH. 64 support and and I'm sure there's fixes in SD stub since we forked and just we haven't pulled them in um, So we need to do that I'd like to clean up the substitution or kind of allow multiple substitution pairs Maybe so that you could have multiple tokens in the built-in command line that said You know if you match these tokens put them here if you match these tokens, you know append them in a second place so that would allow you to like have a have some tokens go after the dash dash, some tokens go before the dash dash, or something like that. Um, and right now, the allowed list is hard coded in C in the, in the stubby executable. I mean, you can change it, it's pretty easy to do, but I'd like to be able to add that as a section in the PE file um, and read from there. And then 
I, I'd like to get off of Stubby. We'd, we'd like to get on to using SD Stub. I think for our use case, um, probably we can live with what's there. And the, the EFI signing is, is sufficient. Um, I think for a more general distribution, then you probably, the whitelist approach might have some more appeal or need. Um, maybe not, but I, I, th I think the whitelist approach has, has, has merit, and um, I'd like to kind of look at that upstream. Um, then I, I mentioned systemd. Right now, systemd does open up proc command line and just reads the whole proc, reads the whole command line, pays attention to things that are for it, but I'd like to make it, I'd like to have it, I think it should pay attention to less. Like, essentially the kernel said don't pay attention to the stuff, you know, it namespaced, it tokenized that string into before and after, and so I think user space programs should do that too. Um, I think it just makes for a cleaner solution. And then, yeah, that's it. Um, thanks, thank, thank you for being here. Thanks to my team, thanks for Cisco for sending me here. Thanks to my family for putting up with the fact that dad just left for a week and we'll come back uh, jet lagged and, and thank God. Okay, so questions. Take questions now? Yep. Ah, we have one. Uh, yeah. Uh, you, you talked about measuring the command line in PCR. Which, uh, which you can't do, right, because it can change uh, depending on. Would it make sense to then measure the allow list into PCR instead? To still have something to, to pin against? Well, the allow list is measured in, I mean, the allow list is inherently measured in because of the thing that loaded it, right? I mean, the, the oh, yeah. SD stub is signed, so it's already measured essentially. Oh, is that? Thanks. Right, stubby is signed, not SD stub. Um, so uh, I, I just wanted to say, like, regarding the namespacing of the options um, and the dash dash thingy, um, like, it's very hard to, to change that now, um, of course, yeah. because this is what, what everybody does. But it's not that bad. Like, the, the kernel command line options that uh, systemd uses, they're all prefixed with systemd yeah, it, dot, except for the ones <laughs> that we inherited from, from, from like earlier. Like three. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, so that's that's part of the API of Linux, I guess. We have to do yeah. this, right? So also this warning that the kernel does when it recognizes, uh, it doesn't recognize an option, that actually only is triggered if the uh, setting does not have a dot in it, right? So it kind of yes. pushes oh. user space to actually namespace their stuff with at least one dot. Um, um, so because they don't want these messages to show up, right? Like so then the examples right. that you had there, um, uh, like at least one of them was not namespace, but if you boot it up with that, then it will <laughs> just uh, complain about it. Um, right. But did I get this um, right that the only really thing that you're missing in SD uh, boot is the uh, allow list, deny list thingy? Yeah, I and I and I think we could live without it. At the, I, we could live without it, but so, I think it's more you know, flexible. Luca is very opinionated about it and hates the idea. I'm actually very more open to this. Um, I think uh, <laughs> I, I was aware of that. <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> it's like uh, I'd be very open, for example, to to and I think we absolutely should do this. Uh, and maybe Luca can actually be convinced of that part. Um, at least allow um, alternative command lines. Yes. So, see, there you go. So that basically, you have a curated list, and you can choose one of them. And this this would uh, would be something we could even integrate nicely with SD Boot yeah. because then we can actually, like, if you have one drop-in kernel, we will synthesize five or something uh, menu items out of this, um, reflecting the five things. And then these could be like, yeah, debug mode and regular mode and whatever else. Right. So that's definitely something I think we all can agree on. Um, this would probably get you quite far. And I personally, I have no problem with uh, coming up with a su super simple language that uh, just allow lists additions. Um, uh, what Luca doesn't like about it is that's a parser, um, and yeah. uh, this is super high privileged code. But fr frankly, I mean, we parse PE and whatnot. That was think, that's my uh, approach. Uh, thought too, yeah. <laughs> no, we, do, we of course we do. Yeah. Yeah. We have like, I mean, all of system has like five PE parsers or something. Everybody needs a PE parser. But yeah, I, I reduced that a little bit. But anyway, um, so I'm, I'm actually kind of open. It, what I really care about is to make the language um, for, for wildcard um, allowing so dumb that uh, it right. only does what is actually really makes sense and uh, 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 not, not a single bit more, right? Like, uh, right, yeah. So, and uh, 
I don't know. Like, uh, I would be open to that, but I think the first step really should be the the like just allowing alternatives. The alternatives, yeah. Yes, let's do the multi command line first, and then we can fight <laughs> on the command line list. Um, but I think we are out of time here. Sorry, uh, we need to move to the next one. Right. So thank you, Scott. Thank you.